which one we get there. I hope I remember to tell you about the finger of God. But um, anyway, there you go. Which shows, which shows that God's power all surpasses Satan's. That, well, that's right. But Satan can do false flipped. miracles and wonders yeah. and lying signs, just as it says in the book of Revelation and, and uh, 2 Thessalonians, I think. But God surpasses that. And that's another point. Might as well tell you because... Um, in the book of Jonah, and I just happened to notice this, I, was, I had to read it like five times or six times in a row. And, you know, you could just say, yeah, I read it. and then. But for college, it was one of my projects was the book of Jonah. And it says, read Jonah. This, And, of course, all you do is you say, yes, I read it the second time. Well, I really read it. I'm not going to lie about that, whereas I'm sure some of the people just said, yeah, I read it. But when I read it, by the fourth or fifth time, I realized that God prepared four things. And this particular word, mana, is only used, it's used 28 times in 27 verses of the Bible, but it's only used five times as that word. In other words, we have a word that can have different meanings. In this meaning, it's only used five times in the Bible, and four of them are in the book of Jonah. Okay? So, he prepared, specially prepared, a fish. He prepared a plant, he prepared a worm, and he prepared an east wind. Well, what does that tell you? A sea animal, a land animal, a plant, and a natural phenomena. And if you think about it, all four of those are interdependent on their surroundings. Therefore, God is sovereign over the entire creation. And that's what's being said there. One more time, this word is used in the, the Bible, and it's in the Psalms. And it's, God has prepared mercy and truth, for, basically for those who love him. I, it's out of context, but anyway, so he prepares specially those five things in the Bible. Interesting, man, I'm telling you what, Jonah is packed full of great stuff. And it's such a small book and people read it and they dismiss it. If you heard the quote I gave for chapter 3, I was so incensed. I bought this one Bible this, when I just met the Lord. We were in a year-long Bible study, which I lasted two weeks in there before I left. I, I was so mad at the guy. But he said, I recommend you buy this Bible. And I thought, well, he's a pastor. He must know what he's talking about. And it was the New Oxford Annotated Bible. And so I went out and I spent like, it was expensive, like 50 or $80. And this is back in 2000. It was this big. And it, it, the whole Bible commentary belittles the Bible as they're co making their commentary. And in Jonah, it was, it was pathetic. It's, God, you know, this is a humorous book and blah, 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 blah. And it goes through all of these examples and it just diminishes them. And it says that it's so ridiculous to think that somebody would sleep in a ship on the ocean that's being tossed around. And as I said, never mind that Jesus did the same thing in the New Testament. It's so ridiculous that a prophet would run from God. Never mind that the apostles did it in the New Testament. All of these things, they said, they're just belittling the Bible in all of their commentary. It almost makes me throw up, but it makes for great sermon material because we got these, these scholars. And they don't realize the very book that they're making fun of is pointing right back at them, accusing them for the day of judgment. Uh, oh, boy, I tell you. You know, hopefully that won't happen. Hopefully they'll repent beforehand. But... You know, it's, it, it, it's, it, I, I would like to take the Bible and just throw it away, but it's, it's good for its own purposes. It's to show the utter corruption of people that think, I learned Hebrew, I learned Greek, and I've got a doctorate degree in whatever. It means nothing. It means absolutely nothing if you don't properly handle the Word of God. Uh, 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 uh. So the one that I, I, I've got to tell you, because I hate to waste time, but I've got to tell you, because... The one that really got me upset, and it's in chapter 3 of Jonah, is when it says how sarcastic and ridiculous it was for the people to put sackcloth on the animals. Do you remember that? It says the people repented and even the animals had sackcloth. Other than you, because you heard the sermon, why would the animals have sackcloth on them? They say it's a joke. It's stupid. Nobody would ever do that. Why? The whole world is growing for the day that the sons of, of God. Well, that's true, but I don't believe that's what... The people put it on the animals to show their um, depth of repentance. That's what I thought at first. But when I was preparing for the sermon, I, I, I thought, you know, we need to go deeper than that. And I've never read a commentary on this, but here's what I think. What is it that you do with animals? Sacrifice. That's one. And what's the other? What? Well, forget the eating part because that's... God ordained. There's one other thing that people do that's disallowed in the, the Torah five times. Worship. No? Sex? Bestiality. 
So these animals participated in, it says the wickedness of the people. They participated in the actions with the humans. So you have that and you also have the sacrifice to false gods. And they, they were saying because of the wickedness, we're even putting it on these animals to show how utterly we repent of what we did. So, yeah, I, you know, uh, if you think things through from the context, and let me, can I give you one more from Jonah? Just because it's such a wonderful book. I gave, oh, I gave it last night. Once again, I'm preparing for the sermon, and I could, I didn't see, I've never seen a commentary on this. It says that Jonah went outside east of the city and waited for Nineveh to be destroyed. I, I don't know anybody that's ever commented on why did he go east of the city? Why would he do that? Oh, east. Why would he go east of the city? Oh, you've talked about that. No, it's not what you're thinking. I know what you're thinking right now because I've talked about East of Eden. and Yeah. You know. Here's my thought on that after thinking it through because I want to make sure that when I preach something, it's going to be what I believe is proper. Here's what I think it is. It's that in the Bible and in America, when do we attack our enemies in America? Whenever we start a war. Always America does this. This is the standard operational procedure for starting a war in America. The what? Well, after that, when you are actually committing the troops into battle for the first time, when do they do it? Pre-dawn. Pre-dawn or right at dawn when people can't get away. When there's no way to retaliate, there's no pre-dawn. And that is the standard. It's been that way in America since we were established. Sodom and Gomorrah, right at dawn. They're destroyed. The people can't even escape. The, the fire and brimstone come down. In the book of Kings, there's a pre-dawn attack. Actually, I think there's more than one. But why would he sit east of the city? It's because he's got the sun at his back and he can watch the destruction as it comes down. If he's sitting west, all he can see is the sun glaring off of it. I'm telling you, Jonah's got so many little tidbits. In. Oh, I love that. And you know, it's just one of those little books you just read through and you laugh about and you kind of go on. There is so much. I, 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 I bet you I missed... 5,000% of what is in that book. So I'm going to have to go back and review it one of these days and just really get into every single word because what a beautiful story. Anyway, sorry to divert so much, but I get so excited about these things because, you know, it's not the kind of thing that people normally talk about. You know, you know we just, unless you're in a Bible study, nobody talks about these things. And that's why you give your ideas and all of a sudden, wow, and ah, I love the Bible. Well, please go ahead, wherever we were. Oh, the, the serpents, that's where we were. Go ahead. But Aaron, yes, Pharaoh's heart was hardened. Not for each one threw down his staff, and they turned into serpents. But Aaron's staff swallowed up their staff. That's right. Now, that's something that certainly shows that yes. there is a difference because yes. snakes don't eat snakes, but in this case, they did. So that, that shows you, yes, they can do this, but this is superior. Now, yes. that's not enough, in my opinion, if I was, and I'm just trying to put myself in Pharaoh's position, that's not enough, in my opinion, to say, okay, I'm going to let your people go. I may say, wow, that was pretty cool, you know, but I, I, I want to see more before I'm really convinced, okay? <laughs> Yeah. Pharaoh's heart was hardened, but I got to tell you, Charlie Garrett's was hardened to that too, because I've seen people cut quarters out of their own skin. They okay. Put it in ahead of time and just shoved it. Yeah. There you go. Uh, well, you know, but it had her signature on it. So we, she oh. signed it right there, just a girl on the street. Wow. And so you know, I mean, it's things like that that are just. It, I, I don't know. You know, I don't know how these things happen. Oh, it could be Satan. I mean, I have no idea. I, but even if it is Satan. It doesn't answer how he got that quarter out of his esophageal airway and over there, or if in fact, you know, and he was very careful. It wasn't like one of these, I'm going to sw swap this quarter. He was very careful about grabbing it. You know, very perplexing. What's that? He got it beforehand. He paid her. He, 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 maybe he did. I have no idea. All I can say is it's very, that is possible. That is possible that he actually had the girl in two quarters. Whatever it is. You know, and I'd never thought of that, but that makes sense. But, you know, it, it takes a devious mind to yeah. think of it. <laughs> I say that because you guys know my brother, that he's the uh, tr one of the trustees or whatever he does in here. He, he's got a mind like that. I never would have thought of that. Okay, but here's what he thought one time. Remember the club that you put in your steering wheel so nobody could steal the car? It's made out of high carbon steel so you can never cut through it. Why didn't that take off? After the first year, you don't see it anymore. Why? 
Because she, devious mind. I never would have thought of that in my whole life. Cut the steering wheel. You don't need it. I never, because I don't think that way. My brother said, he said that right from the beginning. That's the stupidest thing in the world. I'm saying, why? He said, because you just cut the steering wheel. I'm like, I'd be sitting there all month cutting that stupid thing. <laughs> oh, but there we go. Pharaoh's rod. No, oh, stupid. And now my ears are red from being embarrassed. Oh, I'm just, a, I'm a dummy. No, I would make a tear. I'm one of the guys on YouTube that falls out of the roof, breaks his leg, and then sues the company and becomes a millionaire. You know, that's, uh, oh, gosh. Go ahead, please. Yet Pharaoh's heart was hardened, and he did not listen to them as the Lord had said. Then the Lord said to Moses, Pharaoh's heart is stubborn. He refuses to let the people go. Go to Pharaoh in the morning as he is going out to the water. And station yourself to meet him on the bank of the Nile. Okay, now this one here is right afterward. It says go in the morning. Okay, so we can assume that this one is after. All of these are on a couple pages. I want to tell you this in advance. They're all on a couple pages. But... According to Josephus, they go over, I think, a two- or three-year period. I mean, it's not immediate. That one is, okay, just so you know, that Josephus writes, I, I think it's him that writes that it actually is spread out over time. But when we're reading it, it's like reading the Book of Kings. How can these people be so stupid? Well, there might be 80 years between two paragraphs. Exactly. So be careful when you say that because we've only been a nation for 230 years and we are as bad or worse than they were, okay? So, you know, there's a lot of time. And plus, they didn't have text messages. They didn't have communication. They didn't have all these things. And so you would think that it would develop slower there because, like I said, you know, we're out in the country. We're worshiping God. Our hands are in the soil. 80 years to them, they're passing down traditions. Whereas here, we've got everything right away. So we can't say how stupid they were when we should say to ourselves, look at how stupid we are, right? Okay. All right, go ahead. Uh, let's see. 16. 16. You shall say to him, the Lord, the God of the Hebrews, sent me to you, saying, Let my people go, that they may serve me in the wilderness. But behold, you have not listened until now. Thus says the Lord, By this you shall know that I am the Lord. Behold, I will strike the water that is in the Nile with the staff that is in my hand, and it will be turned to blood. The fish that are in the Nile will die, and the Nile will become foul, and the Egyptians will find difficulty in drinking water from the Nile. Then the Lord said to Moses, Say to Aaron, Take your staff and stretch out your hand over the waters of Egypt, over their rivers, their streams, and their pools, and over all their reservoirs of water, that they may become blood. And there will be blood throughout all the land of Egypt, both in vessels of wood and in vessels of stone. Okay, now this says blood, and I have no reason to think that it's anything other than blood. Now, people have tried to attribute it to, you know, a, a, a ferric compound, iron, that turns the water red, or, you know, an algae or something. And we can't say that's not the case, but it does say blood, and I would say it is blood. That's just, you know, how I perceive that. I mean, uh, we weren't there at the time. All we can do is take it on face value and take it on faith that it actually was blood. Um, and uh, what does it say? I had another point I wanted to tell you. River the rod that is in his hand. Um, the fish shall stink. Then uh, take your hand over. The oh, once again, and I said this, and some of you might not have been in here. The reason why he is doing this in the way he's doing it is because he is challenging the gods of Egypt. Each one of these is a particular god, the god of the Nile, the god of snakes. Remember this thing on top of Pharaoh's head, the symbol of Pharaoh. So each one of these is a particular god within Egypt, and he is subduing each god in order. Okay, so go ahead, 20. Wait, 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 wait. Oh, yes. My NIV commentary says here about water turning blood. Um, it says, um, the, the first plague may have resulted from an unparalleled quantity of red sediments being washed down from Ethiopia during the annual flooding of the Nile in late summer and early fall, causing the water of Egypt's lifeline to become as red as blood. That's why I don't read commentaries right there. I'm just saying. To yeah, I, 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 that's right. Is, that's why I don't. It's because people start believing that. But the fact is, if that's the case, then they saw it year after year after year exactly. after year. And it would have meant nothing. Right. 